Hi everybody! How you guys doing? We got an all new Transformation Tuesday. It has been two weeks, two weeks since I've had a chance to do a transformation for you guys. Um, I've just been super caught up with work, but I'm really excited to be back and ready to do it today. Um, so, how have all you guys been doing? Uh, today, we're going to be applying 3D transfers. Yeah! I'm going to show you guys exactly what that is. Um, so this is to try to help you guys do your own like Halloween stuff if you're planning on doing anything for Halloween. Um, of course, now I'm getting more into like the creepy stuff because Halloween is around the corner. I'm super excited. Um, sorry, just a second, guys. Uh, here we go. Okay, so 3D transfers. I'm going to show you what that's all about. They're really, really cool. This is the one that I'm working with today. I don't want to drop it. Duh. This is a 3D transfer, guys. The cool, creepy, claw-like stuff. So the way 3D transfers work is kind of think of them, if you remember when you were a kid, or even now, I don't know how, if you guys are still doing it. Remember rub-on tattoos? You stick it on, and then you rub on with water, and then you peel it off, and then all of a sudden you have a tattoo? Uh, this is kind of the same thing, but with prosthetics. So it's really cool. It's very easy to use and do on your own, uh, but of course it takes a little bit of understanding first before you dive right in. Uh, hand back down anyways, watching while doing homework is getting me through. Awesome, Deb. Get your homework done, Deb. Hey, Tim. How's it going out there, everybody? Uh, oh, let me plug in. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of battery. There we go. Okay. 3D transfers. I'm so excited. I haven't done one of these in a while, to be honest, so I'm actually a little out of practice myself, so I'm really excited to get back into it. Um, so this one, um, what's it called? I got this one at a place called Party Experts, so if you guys uh, have Party Experts around where you are, then great. Otherwise, go look at other Halloween costume shops. Uh, this one so they're not too expensive so you can get a really awesome Halloween costume out of this and you don't need a lot of experience to apply it but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it anyways on your eyes getting better hope okay thank you Deb um, Aaron hello I feel like we haven't seen you in a while okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get started already so the way this works is right now the prosthetic piece if I touch this, it's super sticky. You like you can feel the piece, so that's your first step, is you don't want to touch it. As soon as you touch it, you have risk of ruining the entire prosthetic piece, so you have to be very, very careful how you handle this. There is this little clear plastic piece. You can sort of see I'm like lifting it off. So again, kind of like when you're doing rub-on tattoos, there's this clear plastic piece you peel off first, and then you kind of apply it. This is a little different. We have an extra step that we're adding before we do that. So I'm going to start by taking the plastic piece off. And taking the plastic piece off is also going to be taking the prosthetic off with it. So you can see the prosthetic is lifting up. I'm going to try and do as much of this in the camera view for you guys, but it's kind of hard to do. You guys can see I'm lifting the plastic piece off. I have to just put it down for a second. I got it off now. This is what it looks like. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is very carefully turn it upside down. So this is the sticky part. I want to go sticky side back down onto this paper that we were working with. Okay, so here we go. So sticky side down and I'm just replacing it back onto the paper. Okay. Now it's back on. So it's kind of upside down now, so I or inside out, I don't really know how to describe it, and I want to push that, I'm pushing the prosthetic piece now into it, so now I can touch it. Now this is the clear part, and underneath is the white paper, the transfer paper. I'm missing things. Last time I seen with your mom, I'm lots of miles. Oh yeah, it's true. Hey Scott. Hey Jordan. Uh, oh, hey Homer. All right. So I'm going ahead, still just sticking this on. I don't know why there's a piece of sticky goop on the back of this. I'm going to take that off. Okay, 
Now we're ready to use it. Hey, Jody. So now, uh, the easiest way to go about doing this now is often when you can buy these, uh, they come with like a few different ones on them. I got another one. Oh, I didn't bring it next to me. I have another one that has like multiple pieces on it. So you can cut out each individual piece. Again, kind of like rub on tattoos where you get like a whole sheet of different tattoos. You want to cut around it and make sure that you're not cutting into the actual tattoo. So in this case, we don't want to cut into the actual prosthetic. We just want to get as close to it as possible because there's a lot of excess. Sorry, it's overexposed. You can see, see this line here, this sort of square. This is all excess that we don't necessarily need. We just want to make sure we get these claw pieces. Hey, Khalid, yes, I'm back. Jordan, hey, with Moon's text is cool, Annie. Hey, Annie. Okay, so now I'm gonna go, go ahead and I'm just gonna trim this to be a little bit smaller. So just whatever scissors you've got. And again, being very careful, you don't wanna cut the actual prosthetic piece. Just get close to it. I'll show you guys how to clean away excess once it's on. This helps you just get a better idea of like where you want to place it, etc., etc., etc. Cool. Okay. All right. So we have the piece. What am I doing today, Aaron? Aaron, I'm going to show you guys how to apply a 3D transfer prosthetic piece so you can do your own cool Halloween makeups. Um, very fun, very easy to use. So now we have to figure out where you want to put it. So I want to put it on my face. I actually just want to get my hair out of my way. Let's tie this mane up. Hey, Amy. Who else is out there today? How's it going? Everybody. Everybody. Okay. My hair doesn't have to be pretty for this. So now you want to figure out exactly like where we want to place it. Uh -oh, I'm getting worried because it's too big for my little face. I didn't think of that. I have a really small head, so most things are not a one size fits all for me. Um, hey, Kehlani. Kehlani, I missed last week, so don't worry. Okay, so we want to make sure this is going to go into my eye. So it's going to end up going a bit lower down. Okay, so it's going to go half onto my neck because otherwise I can't fit the whole thing onto my face. Put it on my chest. Should I do that guys? Should I put it on my chest? Uh, hey Roy, thank you. Yeah, travel to me just before Halloween so you can be like, oh yeah, come see me for Halloween. Guys, what do you think? Should I just put it on my chest then or on my neck? I wanted to do it on my face though because it's always maybe more dramatic. Hmm. Is this a Wolverine scratch? Um, yeah, sure, why not? We're gonna say it's a Wolverine scratch. <laughs> Just a thought. Uh, any updates on my eye, collarbone? Uh, my eye is uh, taking time there, Deb. Taking time. Collarbone. Yeah, I like the face. Face, face, face. Okay, I'm getting a lot of face. So it's just gonna end up having to be like half onto my face and going onto my neck, which could be cool. That could be really cool. <laughs> I'm like, is this side of my face bigger? Why do I have such a small head? <laughs> we can thank my dad for that. That's where I get my tiny head from. Uh, okay. I think it's going to be cool because it's going to kind of go down onto my neck a little bit too. Yeah, with all the blood, I think it's going to be more dramatic. I just kind of wish it was a little bit smaller. It would look really cool on my chest too. Like, what about like low down there? This is the fun part. It's like trying to decide where to put it. Um, no, I still, I still feel very, yeah, certain about the face. Okay. So now I've got doo -doo -doo, a brush. Where's a good brush I can use? A good brush. Okay. Oh, that brush is still wet. Whatever. This is fine. This is fine. Oh, you say neck. Hello, Danilo. Uh, on my cheek. I like that it goes down towards your neck. Do it on your face. I like <laughs> face, face, face. Okay, so 
Uh, thank you, Andres. Neck and face. Okay, so yeah, it's gonna go just slightly down onto my neck and face. This is always tricky. The hard part with transfers or any prosthetic pieces is that you want to try and get, if it's one piece that you're working with, you want it to be, you want to try not to get these sort of creases. It makes it a little bit more challenging. When you have multiple pieces, it's okay. You can put one here and one there. But that's why, like, often when you look on, like, movies and TVs, when they have, like, full face prosthetics, they have it cut up into pieces it's not just one like mask they'll have like one piece just for the eyes they have a piece just for the neck two different pieces for the cheek another piece for the chin and mouth it's, it's always different um call and go high it looks good on your face so it's not touching your jaw too much you can talk not mess it up yeah i should be able to talk and not mess it up i'm just gonna i'm gonna go with my instincts i'm just gonna go ahead and do it anyways and it's i can't promise how well it'll turn out it probably will be better Oh my god, I should have decided this before I went live. <laughs> what, what am I doing? I like it on the face. Why is my face so small? I guess I could like cut off this last one. No, it's still too long. And I don't want to put it on my eye either because that's uh, this extra risk. Okay, I'm just going to go for the face. Okay, so next thing you need for this is just some translucent powder. Uh, this one is from Mehron. I love Mehron stuff and just a regular brush, whatever you've got. So this is going to help you in terms of where you want to place the tattoo. So I was looking at it like this, but it's actually going to be the opposite way around. It's going to be a backwards version of this. So just to get a feeling of exactly where it's going to go. There, so we're going to take the powder. Um, I'm gonna just take some of this loose powder and I'm gonna put it right here on my palette. Um, neck and face, think your eye is boss, <laughs> thanks. Chest is the best. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and do it on the face and hey, you live and learn. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Who knows? Man, collarbone. It's weird. Now you guys have me doubting myself. <laughs> what are you guys doing to me? Uh, I'm just worried it's gonna be. No, I want it on my face. I want Wolverine to claw on my face. Okay. So, face. So now I'm gonna. Now that I know where I want it, which is gonna end up being right around here. I'm going partially down onto my neck. I'll take a little bit off from my eye. Okay. Taking the powder and I'm just putting it. It's kind of like I'm tracing. That's where my shape is. So now I know exactly where I want it to go. The powder just helps gives you some guidance before you apply it so you don't screw up. And apparently get it all over yourself at the same time. Apply powder with caution. Um, oh, you made a YouTube. Okay, go subscribe, Aaron. Your name should appear on the screen. I didn't see it. You gotta be watching the video at the same time, though. Okay. Now's the fun part. Where's the water? Okay, I've got some water. Actually, I got this water too. Mm -mm. Okay, I got a little bit of powder on the actual prosthetic. It's okay, it'll be fine. Um, before I go ahead and apply it, these can be applied with just water alone, but if you wanna have an extra, extra hold and make sure it's really going to stay, I would suggest using an adhesive. Um, so then the scratch gonna go downward if you turn it around. Yeah, well I want it to go downwards anyways, as if like it went, that's what it should look like. 
actually is that the smaller scratches that are at the top, I feel like the bigger scratches, like when somebody claws and it like pulls away. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Okay, so different adhesives, you can use spirit gum. Those are the cheaper ones. My favorite is Prosade, or as my friend on set likes to call it, Prosade, which was always an ongoing joke, Prosade. It's very funny. Um, the way this works, I'm gonna apply it right onto my skin Whoops. with a Q-tip that are falling all over the place. And now that I know exactly where the piece is gonna go, I know where to apply the adhesive. I don't need too too much of this because like I said this should hold all on its own as is but just to show you guys a little extra step you know this is what I do when I'm working on set this is what I would do for Halloween for a client just to ensure that the makeup will last all night all day and you'll get an extra good hold so as you can see prosade is white it goes on white you cannot apply it now directly. Now it has to dry. And the only way you can dry it is with heat. You can't just let it air dry. So I'm gonna use my crappy little blow dryer here for a second. Make sure it's on heat. Okay. And it's gonna dry clear. So now you can see the prosade has gone clear. Now you can go ahead and apply. If you don't, it's the kind of thing like it would like creep out, it would stay white, it's annoying. My only concern right now is that I did get powder on the prosthetic, so I hope it's not gonna be a problem. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove that clear plastic layer on top of the piece. Ta-da! Oh my god, it's so sticky, guys, so please be careful with the edges. Kyle, hello. Um, be careful, try to just hold it from the edges. If you touch the prosthetic, you could ruin the whole thing. It's very, very, very sticky. So now, carefully, I'm just going to place it back where I first, back, uh, where I traced my lines for it. And now, actually, I want to get rid of some of this excess powder. This is just too much, but I'll take it all off after. Okay. Um, uh, okay, hang on a second. I'm going to answer all your questions in just a second, but while I have this on, I'm taking a cotton pad now, now that it's on, wetting the cotton pad or a towel, whatever you have, exactly like you would if it was a tattoo. And now I'm just soaking it. Okay, so where can you get it? Get it at any Halloween store. I get mine at Party Experts, it's in Montreal. I don't know if they are if they have other locations elsewhere around the world, but I get mine Party Experts. But look at any Halloween store, they're called 3D transfers, specifically. Um, where do you do this, in your house or elsewhere? I do it in my house, this is my home. And uh, hi, darling. Hi, Alexandra. Just wetting it a little bit more. Want to make sure it's really on good. At the same time, I'm kind of just wiping away all this excess powder. <laughs> These are really cool, guys. I really hope this turns out well, and I didn't pick a crappy spot to apply it, but uh, yeah. I got other cool ones, too, which I'll, I'll show you guys next week. It'll be fun. Oh, I can already feel it coming off. I'm 
Okay, it's ready, guys. I'm gonna peel. Cool. Okay, so my biggest mistake was that I got some powder around the edges of the prosthetic. So just something to keep an eye on and be careful with because it's on the edges. But regardless, I'm planning to get rid of these edges anyways. That's the next step that I want to show you. It's too bad. I kind of wish it was higher up. I would have had the extra space. But maybe there's something a bit more natural about this now. And it is moving quite nicely with uh, my jaw. Um, how's everything going with the makeup release? Good, Jason. Any day now, we'll be announcing it. Um, is this Halloween makeup? Yes, Katie, it is Halloween makeup, because we're in season. Okay, guys. Now, <laughs> on set, <laughs> we call this product, um, like, the, and we, call it, <laughs> we call this product Edge Cleaner. That's what we call it, is Edge Cleaner. It's supposed to clean off all the edges. However, what it actually is, is acetone. <laughs> it's just... It's acetone, mine is from uh, Cryolin, and uh, we just don't like to say acetone in front of the actors or clients, because as soon as you tell them you're putting acetone on their face, they might be like, oh, what's, what's that? But that's really what it is. It's just pure acetone, but we like to call it edge cleaner. Um, <laughs> look good there. Thanks, Hazel. Hey, Carly. It's, you know what? You can better read the newspaper with a big cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I could use a coffee. I didn't bring one with me today. Awesome. Yeah, guys, this is awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. Now, realistically, what you should be doing, I'm just being lazy here, is I'm, I'm dipping right into my bottle. But if you're planning to do this with clients and things like that, you should just dip, pour some out into a cup and never double dip. You don't want to contaminate the product. So I'm not going to be double dipping. I'm using multiple Q-tips just because I didn't bring something to pour it in. Also keep in mind, it's acetone. So be careful what you're actually going to pour it in to use it from. You can't put it into like a styrofoam cup. It'll melt right through. So now we're going to clean edges. And try not to inhale the stuff. So notice that I'm working sort of outward, like from the inside and out. Thank you, Diana. Yes, I'm feeling a little better. But it's probably playing for my coffee addiction. <laughs> finally, Galit. You're finally an addict like the rest of us. <laughs> How safe is the acetone on the skin? It's fine. I mean, obviously you don't want to dunk your face into acetone every single day or several times a day. That wouldn't really be good for it. It's very drying for the skin. But this is what women use to take off their nail polish. It's just acetone, essentially. But in general, acetone's not a great product. I actually, I try to find a uh, nail polish remover without acetone in it just because it thins out the nails, it's a little drying. So again, you don't want to cover your face in this all the time. But when you're doing little things like this, it's fine. It's safe enough that we use, like I said, we use this on actors on film sets for all the special effects stuff. Everybody's been safe. Pull it right up my nose. Obviously, just be careful around the eye area and when inhaling it. <laughs>
Oh yeah, the smell of acetone. It's it's actually it's like making my eyes tear. It's very potent. <laughs> the smell. Wash your makeup off our face. Do you use something like toner and day cream? Oh my god, definitely. Um, so after cleaning, it's good to use toner and then definitely put on a moisturizer. And I do that twice a day, every day. Going to Q-tips like crazy. an issue with this edge over here it like doesn't want to blend I got into acetone in a plant I worked one time it eats it ate the soles off oh my god other shoes off yeah well, that's it. So that's why you have to be very careful with it. I mean, I'm using Q-tip size amount just along the prosthetic, you know, like it's, it's barely even touching my face, really. It's really just on the prosthetic. I think I had too much powder here. I don't know. Uh... Yeah, no, I'm really trying not to get it too close to my eyes. That's why I, I kept the prosthetic lower down. But breathing it in. Whew. I think I'm at like a funny angle for eating this side hair. So has anybody out there ever used these before? 3D transfers, anybody familiar with them? Okay, step back, you guys can see. Cool. I'm done with the box. Yeah, there's powder, powder everywhere. Looks great, thanks guys. Uh, okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to powder it because it's super sticky still. They didn't turn out nearly as well as these. Here I am. Yeah, so. Again, they're tricky if you've never used them before, but if like once you understand how it works and how you have to flip it around and transfer like the papers and then transfer it onto yourself, it becomes a little easier. The powder step, that's my own thing. That's something I learned on set just to get a, an exact clear spot of where you want it to be. It's not necessary. If you want, you can just stick it on and go for it. And definitely the prosade is also an added step that I add to it. It is not suggested if you read like the instructions of how to do it. They don't, um, they don't say anywhere you have to use some sort of adhesive. You're supposed to just use water with it. 
It's very, very easy. So I actually picked up a few of these. And guys, I'm super stoked to tell you guys know that I just booked a last minute trip with my mom to Universal Studios this weekend to go see Horror Night. Thank you to my incredible family in Florida who has invited us and is uh, bringing us along with them. So one of my little cousins loves makeup and loves all this stuff. So I got one for him. I hope he's not watching. It's supposed to be a surprise, so I hope he doesn't see this. But I got him one, and I, I think he's going to love it when we go to the park because Universal Studios, um, at nighttime, it turns into a whole, like, horror fest, and it's supposed to be really, really fun. So it's very easy. I'm very excited to show him. I'm hoping he'll let me do it for him there. And I'm not bringing any of my prosade or powder or any of that stuff with me. I'm bringing just the prosthetic, and it's add the water and take it off and just and it'll look like this and I think he's gonna have a lot of fun with it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just powder gently. Again, not something you have to do. I do it because it helps to get rid of the stickiness and like the shine. I don't like the edges though, being very picky with these edges, you can still like see it. I'm gonna try just a little bit. Now the powder is sticking to the edges, whatever. I was planning to give this thing a whole extra paint job anyways, so I'm just being picky. amazing down there for Halloween. Have you here in Canada, Montreal, Jason? Have you been here for Halloween before? Oh, you're talking about Universal. Sorry, I already forgot what I was talking about. Yeah, oh my god. So my, my mom goes every year. Okay, guys, by the way, just for cleaning up, I'm actually just using alcohol now, and it's doing the perfect job for just cleaning up the powder and any little bit of excess. Uh, yeah, my mom goes every year to Universal for the horror night, and I've never been able to go. He lived in, okay, yeah. I've never been able to go, so I'm so, so, so excited. This will be my first time. She always comes home with crazy pictures and stories and raves about it. I'm super excited to be going to Harry Potter World. We're also gonna to go to Disney and I'll go see the whole Pandora area. I'm really, really, really excited. It's still very sticky. All right, I'm just gonna to have to live with this because, grr, it's still, I'm not happy with the edges. Every now and then you get a, a dud with one of these, but. I'm also being very, very picky because that's how I am. Khalid, I wish, I wish you were coming. Hi, Perla. Oh, it's so cool, Jason. Oh, I'm so excited. I went to Universal's, I mean, the last time I was in Orlando Universal Studios was when I was a kid. Like, I was, like, six or something. But I went to uh, Universal Studios when I was in L.A., and it was awesome. But from what I hear, Orlando is way bigger and way better than uh, California. So I'm very, very excited. And, yeah, there's, at Disney, there's, like, the whole Avatar setup locate like park now which I'm really excited to see Ugh. okay I can't read any more of this acetone in I'm done with that done it's done okay I've got powder here everywhere I'm just gonna move that over before I stick my arm in it okay what do you guys think so far I read somewhere they just shut down Dueling Dragons at Universal. Dueling Dragons? What is that? Sounds awesome. <laughs> okay, now the fun stuff starts. So, I mean, this is supposed to already just be 
you know, edgeless and blend in naturally with your skin tone and everything, but I think I want to try and clean it up a little bit. I also want to make the scars deeper and more dramatic. So for this, I'm, I'm using some new stuff this time, so it's uh, I'm excited to teach and show you guys. I have the sweetest voice, so thank you, Cindy. <laughs> So for this, I'm going to be using Skin Illustrator. I have a few of them, <laughs> my effects illustrator stuff. Um, I'm going to just to show you a close up, effects illustrator. And there's uh, all three of them are different colors. They have they sell a million of these kinds. Um, I don't know if it's where they cross. They're cool. So effects illustrator. This is the pro stuff. This is what we use on set. I don't use my usual Mayron makeup ever on set. It's always Skin Illustrator. You can do so much with this. Um, a lot of people like to use it for filling in their eyebrows. They'll create freckles on their face with it. It's um, it's supposed to look like you have no makeup on. That's the nice thing with it. You can create really cool veins and stuff with it. It works really well for painting prosthetics. I would never use my Mayron, like my face paints, on top of a prosthetic piece like this. It's amazing. These guys are a small fortune though. Uh, in Canada prices, they're like roughly $100 each. So they are very pricey. So I take really good care of mine. I try to anyways and try to use them somewhat sparingly. Now the way these work is you have to use them with alcohol and not just any alcohol. It has to be 100% alcohol. So not like the 50% that you find in the store or something in, pharma pre in a pharmacy or something. Um, it has to be 100% alcohol, which I have. And I filled up this bottle with it. It says 100% because I have another bottle filled with alcohol for just disinfecting my brushes or my lipsticks or things like that for people, for clients. This one I save specifically for this stuff because 100% alcohol is also expensive. All the fancy special effects stuff that we use on film sets are all very expensive. Um, I didn't take my brushes out. <laughs> Where are my brushes? Oh, here we go. Uh, I'm just gonna take the whole jar right here. My jar, my skull jar of brushes. Da, da, da. Is it organized? It's alcohol based. So it's all activated with alcohol. And let's put this here. Okay, so now I just wanna think what I wanna do. So the best way to go about things like this and prosthetic pieces is you want to start from the inside and work your way out. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with like these scars and stuff here. Scars, claws, scratches, whatever you want to call them. Again, I'm really not like 100% thrilled with the edges, but again, this isn't the highest quality stuff. These aren't even things that I use on film sets. We use 3D transfers on film sets but they're not like Halloween store bought. They're professionally made specific prosthetic pieces that have better edges. This was just, this is machine made and you know what I mean? I don't know how to explain it. This stuff, the makeup is the pro stuff I'm using right now. Sorry, I feel like I'm rambling with my brushes. Oh, oh my God, okay. Step, another friendly tip, don't ever put your brushes away in a hurry like I did last time and I put half of them upside down and then you get with brushes that end up looking like this and you ruin your brushes. I'm a dummy. So don't put them away so fast. Mostly going to be using just my skinny brushes because I want to just do fine detailed work with this. So I've just got a variety of little tiny brushes. This one is taped up because it broke, but I love it and I can't bear to give it away. Now another tip, the reason why this broke was because I was using it with products like this. Because this is alcohol based and this is like a plastic brush broke off very easily. So these products are actually better to use with wood brushes. 
cheap ones. Don't get anything too expensive or too fancy. Um, really just, like, you can find them at any, um, any art craft store or even just like a dollar store, whatever brushes, whatever brushes you use for this, expect to ruin them and destroy them because they're going to be sprayed with 100% alcohol, which is really rough on your products. It's rough on your skin too, so you also don't want to do this every day. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out, where's my aged? I can't read anything anymore because it says all the names of them on the top cap inside here, like according to what they are, and I can't read anymore because it's a big mess. Um, okay, I'm going to have to just play a little bit and see. Okay, so I literally just, right now I'm working with the, uh, the Skin Illustrator, the Cuts, Scrapes, and Scabs. Effects Illustrator. Did I lose what it's called? <laughs> Anyways, this one. And I just sprayed the alcohol on top of all of the reds that I have. And now I'm just going to go ahead and test them out and play and see what kind of color it is that I want. Okay, that's good. So here you can kind of see I got three different kinds of reds. Now the one in the middle feels the most like blood-like to me in a sense of like, I don't want it to be too, too bright, but I also don't, like I just, I want to give it more depth. And this is sort of a, I like this, this shade here. It's kind of like a deeper red and I want to bring these out a little bit. It feels so cool. I wish you guys couldn't touch it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one in the middle. So I'm literally just kind of tickling it in. You don't necessarily want it to even be like pretty. I, I just, I want it to be kind of a mess, but you can already see how it's giving more depth. Cool. You can see the difference significantly in the color. So I'm very happy. It really needed to be colored and painted a bit better. And that's the difference with like the store bought stuff versus like professional movie quality stuff. Professionals already kind of have it pre-painted perfectly. Cool. And again, like, I, I, I'm adding some of these little sort of scratches because I don't want it to be... You know, when it comes to stuff like this, I don't like symmetry. I don't want it to be even or straight. Like, I, I want that kind of messy feel to it. And now, when you're using this stuff, very little goes a long way. Like, you can see I, I dip once, and then I apply, and that's way more than enough that I need. And I think I'm just going to go a little bit more right here just to give a little more depth. Awesome. You can also add different shades of red, which I'm going to do afterwards just to 
make it a little bit different. William, I've missed you. Hello. This is a very awkward angle for me. I can't really see it. Cool. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to add the blood. Oh my god. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna add just another color of red, just to mix it up. This one looks a little too pinky. We'll see. And again, I'm just sort of putting in little spots of it. And now my final red color here. Again, because I don't want to all look the same. I want to add a variety of different bloody colors. I'm even going to put in a little bit of black just to give it that extra touch of, of like depth. Ooh, blue would help too, actually, but I'm going to go ahead with just a little bit of the black, but I'm going to mix the black with one of the reds just so it's not so black. So, again, so the reason why my lid here is such a mess is this is where I use, uh, this is what I use for blending the colors. The great thing about it is that you can always reuse the mess on the cap by spraying it with alcohol. You're reactivating it so you get significantly less waste as opposed to mixing it on a separate dish. Justin! Hello! Thank you. Uh, okay, so again, just a little bit. Just mixing colors. You can see me now, good. Thanks, Dustin. So guys, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, invite your friends. Let's get more people watching. God, thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. I'll be applying the exact one for Halloween. Cool, Tara. So now another friendly note is that the amazing part about using these products is that alcohol can be used as an eraser as well. Because it's alcohol activated, activated you can use a Q-tip and spray it with alcohol and clean away your mess. Or like right here, for example, I feel like I added too much black, so I'm just going in with it with just alcohol just to break it up a little bit and make it less severe. Blur. Cool.
Hmm. Um, does makeup have a different reaction on different parts of the body? Um, not really. I mean, there's some parts of the body that your skin is much drier than other places. So I guess depending on what you're working with, it won't sit as right as other places. Um, but I think I, like for the most part, using things like this in prosthetics, the one thing that I said that is better to avoid is you want to try to avoid putting it smack on a jawline. But this one's actually moving quite nicely uh, with my jawline, but often I try to avoid that. You want to have more of a clear surface here than a spot there or a spot here, so that whenever you're moving, it will move well with you. But you can see it's moving pretty well with my jaw, so it's good. Um, I've been here, I've just been silently watching, I'm obsessed from moving and painting. Oh, Missy though. Oh, Melissa, thank you for watching, I'm glad that you're here. Um, okay, I asked this before but got cut off. Has anyone asked you to do anything professionally that you didn't want to do? Um, somebody asked me to do something professionally that I didn't want to do. Not really. I'm very open-minded to whatever. I. I'd say the, like, I'm willing to kind of try anything unless, like, creatively I don't agree with what the person wants, if that, if that makes any sense. If the person's saying, oh, I kind of want this and I want you to do it this way, and I think, hmm, my professional creative opinion, I would think it'd look better if you did it this way. That's the only time I argue. If somebody says, hey, can you put this on my butt? Like, I don't care. Yes, I will put the piece on your butt. Like, <laughs> doesn't really make a difference for me. Uh, I'm very professional in that sense, and I'm willing to, to try different things. In fact, when we were working on X-Men, um, the model that I was assigned to had prosthetic pieces like this all down the side of her body, and it went down her whole uh, left arm, her whole side of her face, and down onto her chest, and it went down like just onto her nipple. And so I was working with two other guys with her. We were three people doing makeup for one person, and the guys would have done it, but having me there, they said, Carly, we want you to be in charge of the nipple. <laughs> Like, they're just like, we don't really want to go there. We don't really want to do it. Like, it's a little out of our comfort zone. We'll do it if we have to. But if you're here, you can do it kind of thing. Okay, so I was in charge of the girl's nipple because the guys felt uncomfortable. She, I think, felt more comfortable knowing that I was doing it. And really all it was was applying the piece, like, on her nipple and then taking it off afterwards. And who cared, you know? But I spent a lot of time with her boobs, so, you know, I guess she was more comfortable with me than the guys anyways. Um, all right, this is coming along. I don't know if I... It doesn't really need much of a cleanup around the outside, like, the color-wise. The color's blending in really nicely with my skin tone, so I'm kind of happy about that. I kind of want to just test it a little bit, though, just to play and see what I could do. So I'm going to go to a different palette now. This one's going to be too dark for me. So I'm going to use this one, which has a few more skin tone colors in it, or appropriate skin tones for my skin tone. And I kind of just want to see if I can clean up some of the edges with this. I don't know if I can or not, but I'm going to try. to clean these they're a little I've got some like blue mixed in so that's why it's better to use the lid and stupid me I didn't okay I'm gonna try it anyways though and just see if I can conceal some of the like edge parts what is the hardest application of makeup or prosthetic to remove Hmm. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, they're, they're all kind of the same. There's not really, um, they all equally have their challenges uh, to apply or to remove. Um, that's a good question. I mean, it's kind of challenging to apply a, a bald cap by yourself. Usually a bald cap is a two-person job. You just like, 
but I've done them many times by myself. I just need the person that I'm applying them on to help me and like hold certain things down while I do certain things. So some things it's kind of like a two person job, which is why I was three people on one girl for X-Men. Um, but hard to take off. No, they're, they're really all about the same. Some things just take longer. Actually, the hardest to take off is not a prosthetic, but it's a product called Pax. Pax is essentially like acrylic paint mixed with the prosate adhesive that I showed in the beginning. So this is glue essentially for your face. It's a really heavy duty adhesive, um, which in itself is not easy to take off. Mixed with acrylic paint and you get this stuff called Pax. This stuff is impossible to take off. So I, I literally spent my weekend painting outside today on canvas and I still have, and I paint with acrylic paint. You can still see on my hand, this is paint. I still have around my fingers a little bit, even like inside my fingernails of acrylic paint here because I just couldn't get it off. Um, acrylic paint is really hard to get off your skin. Like you really have to scrub it mixed with this stuff. Oh my God, it's very easy to apply, but it sucks to take off, sucks. And so we had this guy on X-Men who was covered in the stuff. It was like all over his face, it was all over his arms, and I got stuck with the job of having to take it off every day. And it was brutal, but it comes off eventually. Uh, I hope that answers your question pretty thoroughly. <laughs> Um, okay, back to this. I'm going to keep trying to just sort of lighten up some of my edges here so they blend in a bit. I'm not sure this is doing as much as I'd like this part to be, so I think I'm just going to skip it. I don't think it's doing what I want. We will, however, come over it with some alcohol. Alright, what's next? Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of this. Now I'm just trying to decide if there's anything more special effect-y that I want to add to the look. Do I want like something wrong with my eyes? Do I want bruising? Like what do I want to do with it? Um, I know I definitely want to add some blood splatter and I definitely want to fill the wounds with blood, like more drippy. But I just don't know if I want anything else on my face. I kind of like how this one sort of stands alone. And I think I'm going to leave it as is, especially since this video is really just about how to apply the 3D transfer. Uh, I love your hair. It makes me miss my blonde hair, although I have a perfectly shaped head, which my mom attributes to having a C-section. <laughs> That's really cute. Go blonde, Justin. Blondes have more fun. <laughs> And yeah, I, I, I got I was also a C-section baby, so I also get my mother always tells me I have such a perfect shaped head. However, it ended up being really, really small. <laughs> so my little peanut shaped head. Okay, what's next? This part's fun. It's all fun. This is all fun. I'm just cleaning the alcohol off my brushes now. So that's another thing is that if you uh, if you're cleaning your brushes, oh, yeah, let's see, this is what happens. So cleaning your brushes, 
you can't just clean these with water or soap or any other cleaner. You have to clean them with alcohol or it's not going to come off. The only way to take the alcohol-based skin illustrator off is with alcohol. So unfortunately, it does a number to your brushes. So this brush, I just like literally sprayed and a bunch of brush bristles just came out. But uh, whatever. That's why you use really, really cheap stuff for this because you'll be going through brushes like crazy. Um, I natural blonde hair. Now I have no hair. <laughs> no bald cap needed. That's funny. But do you shave your head by choice or you just you don't have hair anymore? Okay. I think that is clean. I'm going to clean this one before it dries too fast. Okay. All right, guys. It's gotten very quiet in here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reshare this video and see if we can get more people in here chatting with us. Let's get more people watching. Guys, call up your friends. Let's get the party started. It went uh, the natural way, although I shave what's left. <laughs> Fair enough. That's all right. Now, I've got different kinds of blood. Yes, in special effects there are different kinds of blood. So now I'm working with the Mehron blood. When it comes to blood, blood is pretty much blood. Um, I can't say that some blood is better than others. Hey, if it's red and sticky and it looks like blood, it's gonna do the trick. So it's, uh, it's good in that way. But what you need to learn about is the different kinds. So we have, and super sticky stage blood this blood is like a dripping kind of like wound you put it on and it just it takes a mind of its own and it will go everywhere if you're not careful with it so it's very drippy but like a thick drip then we have squirt blood which is kind of as it sounds it's like squirting it gives that sort of splatter effect which Where'd my toothbrush go? I was not prepared for this, <laughs> apparently. I need to use my toothbrush for this. I have one somewhere. I'm gonna have to look through. A toothbrush works really great for this effect. You can really get that splatter with the bristles on it. I might have to try something else. I swear I've had a toothbrush in this jar forever and now it's all of a sudden gone. Anyways, the squirt blood. Very fun to use, but this really like pushed it like it squirts. It's very liquidy. You can even hear actually here's another bottle. Like you can kind of see it, it just like it it goes everywhere. Whereas this one, it's a little bit like thicker. You can move it, but it's like moving much slower inside. It's very, very thick. Lastly, we have the coagulated blood. So coagulated blood is kind of like scab like so you can put this on and it will stay put wherever you put it it's gonna stay there you can manipulate it and you have some room and play time to move it around but for the most part you put it on it will stay there so that's what I think I want to use for this today because if I fill all these wounds now which by the way they're like they're totally dry like putting the paint on it it doesn't that's the nice thing about this stuff it won't go anywhere oh shiny yeah uh, Hannah, Hannah um, makes her own blood. You can easily make your own blood too. I haven't done it yet, but I believe it's a mix of like corn syrup and something else. There, You can definitely make your own blood. Um, and I guess there's different ingredients you can use to dilute it if you want to get that squirting effect, or you can thicken it up, I'm sure, to get the coagulated effect. So what I think I'm going to do is actually a combination of all of them. I'm going to use the coagulated blood to fill in these wounds. And then I'm going to use some of the stage blood just to get some of these drips kind of coming down onto me. Plus, I want to have the squirt blood just because it gives this really cool splatter effect. But I really need to find my toothbrush. I swear it was in here. 
Ah! I knew it. I knew they were here. I got two of them. I'm gonna use this one. No, I specifically keep these brushes just for my makeup uses. That's it. Okay. But it even has my name on it for when I'm working on set. Everything gets lost and misplaced on set, so put your name on everything. Okay. Coagulated blood. It's gonna be fun. I haven't played with this stuff in so long. I'm so excited. I love Halloween. Okay. Um, you can even use like if you don't want to ruin your brush, just a Q-tip, a stick, something. But whatever. I'm just my brush is already ruined, so I'm gonna just give her. Okay. So this stuff is super thick. I just want you to see even just like manipulating it. Like, it really stays put. It doesn't really drip. It, like, it just stays there. So it's really easy to use. It, looks, it does look real. That's why, I, particularly why I like the coagulated blood. Oh, let's give her. In a lot of cases, guys, less is more. I just wanted to have that shine on it because if it's freshly wounded, bloody. But I don't want to take away from the actual prosthetic by adding too much. You add too much and you'll lose some of the effect of like that indentation. See what it's doing to my face here? If you put on too thick, then what's the point of the prosthetic? You could have just covered your face in the blood. Here I got a little drip that went across. Not a drip, but like because it's so sticky, it's like stringy, so I'll have to clean that afterwards. Um, you don't have to use names if you don't want to, but what is the craziest thing you've seen on set? Um, oh boy, the craziest thing that I've seen on set. That's a really good question. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of crazy on set. I mean, I can tell you a story, but I wasn't, I, w I wasn't there for it, but it was like what I heard. Um, on one side, I'm not going to use names, but, um, oh, hi Rochelle and hi Macy. Um, so on one set that I was working on, I was in the trailer, I was getting something ready and, uh, the actress that I was working with came in and we started talking to me. I said, what happened? Well, I weren't supposed to be on set. And she said, the director just like lost his shit and like threw somebody off the set and like took his walkie talkie thing and like threw it on the ground and kind of stormed off, kind of like had a tantrum or something. And I was really disappointed that I missed it. But uh, there was that. There was also, um, What else have I, like, I, I missed that, which is unfortunate. I would have liked to see that drama go down. Um, uh, one actress, who I'm not going to say who, because I don't want to throw her under the bus. She's a real sweetheart, but she is like an A-list actress. Um, <laughs> she totally threw Kevin Spacey under the bus, so I'm gonna throw that out there. So it's just funny that it's Kevin Spacey, but I don't want to say who the actress was because she's really a sweetheart. <laughs> Whatever, she totally threw him under the bus, and she was telling me about how he comes to set like drunk every day. <laughs> like, would love to see that. He either comes to set like hungover or drunk every day. Apparently, she said Kevin Spacey. I don't know. So that would be fun to see. Nothing else like really crazy I can think of that really happens on set. It's very political on set, so like 
everybody really tries to keep themselves and mind their own business because the only people who are allowed to really lose their shit, I guess, are the director. Um, actually, this week I was working on set. I was working on a Cirque du Soleil TV show. Really, really cool. And in terms of the craziest things I've seen on set, this was definitely at the top because literally just spending days sitting and watching Cirque du Soleil for work was like mind blowing. If anybody's ever seen Cirque du Soleil before, it's crazy the things that they can do. So to see them working on set, that was like the craziest things I've really seen on set just because they were so awesome. Everybody was so talented. It's insane. I just realized, okay, I don't think this should go on my shirt. I didn't really want to get my shirt dirty for this. Before anything, I want to fix up the little boo-boo I made right here. It's not the blood, guys. Uh, is easy to clean with just water. So you can see I just did. I wonder if this edge will make it the same color as last time. It's not really. <sighs> so many times. Like the oil of Kawaji. Yes, yes, Justin, we've been over it. Apparently, it's Wolverine. <laughs> As per Galit's request, I was clawed by Wolverine. <laughs> Although he has only three claws, and I have four scratches, so Galit, you might have to rethink that. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of the dripping blood. I don't want it everywhere, though. That's again, like part of the symmetry. I think I'm just gonna, let's see. We're gonna see what happens with it. Cause I don't want too much. See, like I can't even like, it, it just keeps going. So like as soon as I lift it, it's just pouring and it's gonna go everywhere. I'm gonna have to apply carefully. Oh. It's much easier doing this on somebody than myself. Blood. I didn't get the drip where I wanted it to be. What do I always say, guys? Like Bob Ross, happy accidents. So I'm just gonna work with what I just did here and just I hope this drip keeps dripping. Just to add just this extra blood kind of on the sides a little bit. I wanted it to be a bit more clean cut, but that didn't really happen. I could get rid of it, but I like to work with what ends up happening. That's the problem with this stuff. It's very, very messy. No, I don't really like how messy it got. I really liked how clean cut it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clean that a little bit. It was too much. I'm gonna stick with just the coagulated blood and the squirt blood will give a cool effect. So the nice thing about using this stuff is that it comes off easily with water without removing the prosthetic piece or all the alcohol paint that I just used. So it makes for a very easy fix. Um, hello, Professor <laughs> Lupin. Yes, we'll go with Lupin. Galit will like that too. I don't know if she's still here watching, but she loves Harry Potter.
And, you know, I am going to Harry Potter World this weekend, so it's appropriate. Hey, Chris, what's on the agenda today? <laughs> yes, Julia. No, Galit, we're saying that it looks like uh, I was clawed by Lupin instead of Wolverine. <laughs> So yeah, Chris, what's on the agenda for today? So I'm showing how to, you missed the beginning, I guess, of the video, but I showed how to apply this 3D prosthetic, the transfer, very fun process. I'm just cleaning. I know you do. Uh, hey, Hashish, she made it to slash you. It's just that time of the month. Yeah, it's funny, exactly. Um, can the antiseptic do your hurt? I know. I know. Anybody have some polysporin? You know, this would be a cool kind of transformation to go walk up uh, and place an order with because this actually looks real. Like it looks, it actually this actually looks better in real life than it does on person. It, it looks sorry, it looks better in real life than it does on camera. So it's too bad you guys can't like really see me in person, but it looks pretty badass. Okay, let's try the squirt stuff again. Um, Oh, you know what? I'm gonna use this. This will do. I really, I didn't bring enough stuff down here for me to like be mixing things with. This I'm rid of. This I get rid of. Goodbye. Um, incoming sad emoji. No sad emojis. I like the thumbs and the hearts. Uh, get a donut and sun's coffee from Jim Hortons afterwards. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god, this is so funny. Okay, it's such a mess here. I didn't want to throw it. Go away. Okay. Moving on to the squirt blood. So for this, I do find it a lot easier. This is just the plastic that I, the prosthetic came in. So I'm just using this because I'm going to throw it out afterwards. Um, and I'm pouring the squirt blood right onto it. I'm starting with just a little bit just to be sure that I... I like the effect of it. I dipped my my toothbrush, literally just dipping it into it. This is the fun part. I love doing this, okay? So now, <laughs> I'm gonna start off lower because I wanna get, just to see how it looks. Okay, you see the effects of it? It's so good. Cool. Cool. So this makes it a little bit more subtle, which I like, as opposed to the stage blood. It's going everywhere. Cool. Um, so you watched it and we know I haven't seen it yet still. I actually didn't hear really good things, so I wasn't rushing to it, but uh, I still kind of want to see it. I haven't seen a good horror movie in a while. But right now, since I'm leaving for Universal Studios for Horror Nights on, like, I'm leaving on Thursday, I've got, like, one more day left, I want to try and catch up with some of the horror stuff that they're actually showing at the park. Because uh, that'll be fun. Now I'm worried I went a little too overboard. I got a little too splatter happy. And I'm still adding, of course. Go figure. It's more I want the splatters like on other spots of my face as opposed to the actual wounds. I feel like I might have put too much here, but 
How the accidents, guys? Things happen. But I think that this this pretty much does it. It looks like Pennywise Clown scratched you. Ooh. That's cool. You know what? I'm just trying to decide if there's anything else. I'm just gonna go for another squirt. Another squirt. So the fun thing is if I have this face, this is what I like to do for my clients, like for Halloween, is I'll take it and I just whoosh, and I whip it and it makes this cool splatters across the face. Whereas I can't really do that so well on myself. Sort of like added effect. I just I don't want everything to be all in one spot. Now it looks like I'm in like a slasher movie, right? That's kind of what I was going for, guys. I wanted to look like somebody got slashed in front of me after I got slashed myself, and I think we got there. I can see I'm doing some closing my eyes. Okay, this looks pretty deadly. Cool. <laughs> I'm a mess. Okay, I think this pretty much does it. I do that like damsel in distress now. I just want to like clean my hands. They're so covered in blood. Um, America loves you. We love Canada. America sucks. <laughs> um, how are you and I friends? You love all the. Oh, how are you and I friends? You love all the gory and scary stuff, and I crawl up into a little ball. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, Galit, the same way that I got you into coffee. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> I'll get you into my horror. Uh, first is Star Wars, though, girl. First I gotta get you into Star Wars. But you and I both know it's Friends and Harry Potter that brings us together. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna clean my little brush here because it's covered in coagulated blood. <laughs> no big deal. Nope, this is gonna require some soap so guys what do you think like any anything else I should add to this look is this enough am I missing something more for that like damsel in distress type of look oh my god I'm making this so much worse by trying to clean it with that soap just, just put it down Carly just put it away <laughs> Putting it away. I made, seriously, you guys should see this mess I made here. It's awful. <laughs> no fun. Okay, so, um, what's for next week? Sheesh, I'm not even done this week yet. Relax. Relax, man. I have no idea what next week is yet, guys. I'm, right now, honestly, I'm really trying to focus on the more Halloween stuff to give you guys ideas of what looks you can do for Halloween. Um, also for myself to practice for the clients that I'll have uh, on Halloween. Oh, wow, this is all this is all really dry. Well, wow, I'm I'm impressed. Um, so that's really what I'm focusing on. So next week I might actually do something very similar to this. I got something else that's really cool uh, that I'd like to try for you guys. It's a different one where you can I can put pieces different places. So I think I might like to try that again next week. Again, it's really I get the practice and you guys get to learn a little bit about stuff that you can do for your Halloween looks. Oh my god, I literally. I made such a mess of myself. Oh. Okay. Thinking good. Thinking good. So yeah, guys, seriously, I'd like to know what you guys think. Did I miss something? Should I do something under the eyes? Should I make myself look 
beat up? Should I throw in a bruise somewhere? Should I do anything else to this logo? I think it, I think it's kind of cool as is. Maybe I'll take my hair down and I'll take a cool, like, distressed, <laughs> it's a stress picture like, oh my god, ah, ah, <laughs> damsel in distress, ah, yeah, now, it's, now I practice my poses, ah, ah. I should get like, I should just be, <laughs> I should get my mom over here and put like fake nails on her and just show like her hand. <laughs> That'd be funny. Um, how about something above the eye as if it's slash barely hit and slash on the cheek. Yeah, it's, that's what I was sort of thinking of like, that's, I was looking honestly for an extra added prosthetic piece. Like, you know, one like to put like right here, right? As if they started to scratch and then it carried down. And I couldn't find another piece, um, so I don't know. If, I mean, I can just add like blood here and like fake it. I could do that. That's that's definitely easy enough. Let's see. Let's try. Or is it too much? Okay, I'll put it because I can always take it off if I don't like it. Um. Uh, thank you. I can't say your name. I forget, and I know you tell me every week, and I just don't remember right now. But thank you. <laughs> I love that you say it looks realistic. Um, hello from the Ray. Hi, Arden. <laughs> I like Star Wars. Maybe not the way you do, but I do enjoy the movies. And I did just get that shirt I told you about. But I thought you never saw the originals, Skillet. I could have sworn you told me that you never saw the originals. You only saw the, like the new ones, and that's not Star Wars. It's, I mean, it is, but you gotta see the originals. Um, check Sarah Muddle Instagram profile. She does really good, creepy, deadly transformations. Cool. Thanks. So she shall try to remember to check that later. I may forget. If you want, send me a private message because I will very likely forget once I take a shower and take this all off. <laughs> okay, let's try Justin's idea. And, okay, so it would be here. Okay, so that's another thing is that you want to consider like continuity sort of. Um, so I want it to go with like the main big scratch. So I want it to follow in with this sort of shape of it, which kind of goes right up. <laughs> goes right over here. Probably what I should have done was put the uh, other alcohol stuff there first. Because it's not uh, dark enough. Let me see if I can pull out that. Should have done that. I should have. I should have. I'm not sure if I even love it or not yet. Um, Irene, yes. Um, I need a long time ago. Don't fully remember everything. Like probably my early teens. Oh, okay, cool. I probably let you educate me and we watched them with you. Awesome. Thanks. So Natalie, you have such a happy time. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, if you're doing this, make sure to make your eye red. Why make my eye red? Oh, like the white, like as if blood was inside? I just need some depth.
I'm just gonna drag it down just onto my eyebrow a little bit. Good stuff. I don't know if I like it or not. It's okay if you like it. It's still good. I just want to be a little bit messy. It's okay. I think I should have put while I was ahead. I think I've been doing too much now. Too much, it's getting too messy. Sometimes less is more. Okay, so just an extra added piece. Um, it looks more like it just caught like a scratch and it went deep into it. Yeah, I see what you mean. That's what I was trying to go for. I'm just, uh, I'm not sure if the, it looks as 3D as these other ones do or not. I don't like the shape of it. Ugh, it's bothering me now. Why did I listen to you? No, I'm just kidding. It's cool. If you like it, I like it. I just want it to like be a little bit more jagged. I want it to be a bit more textured too. I need this manipulated. That's cool. That's cool. I feel a bit better about that now. I, I just wanted it to like not look so pretty, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm, I'm <laughs> Justin, don't worry. I always appreciate uh, the I, um, ideas and suggestions. I love it now. It was me. I was, I was just not satisfied with how I was doing it, but I kind of like how this turned out. It has some depth to it. It has a little dimension. I think it looks cool. Now something to do with my hair. It's too bad I would add like blood to my hair, but I'm worried that the red is going to stain my hair and I don't really want to do that today. Um, plus I feel like, I don't know, I don't really want to wash it either today. <laughs> I said I just want to keep it as is. Uh, oh, my hair is sticking to this. Oh, I don't like that. Thanks, Dustin. I think this looks pretty awesome, too. I'm really excited. Um, I just want to go very close up for you guys so you can see. Can you guys see it on YouTube? I'll show you how I can move with it. So should I like go like running into Tim Hortons now and be like, help me, help me, I need coffee. <laughs> <laughs> be really funny. Let me 
is super cool. I'm very excited. All right, guys. Well, thank you for your help and all of your suggestions. I think I'm going to call it a day. I've got a lot of things I have to go and continue doing with my day. And I don't know. Maybe I'll go walk the streets and see what I can do with this. Um, can't do it. <laughs> I, should, I should go running into Morty's driving school. Help! <laughs> I got an accident! <laughs> um, yeah. Alright, guys. <laughs> this is all I've got. <laughs> I'm getting a little tired. So I'm going to go and take a whole bunch of really cool pictures. Maybe I'll go roam the streets. We'll see. Because this does look pretty damn cool. So my mom freak her out. <laughs> funny oh my god yeah I'm really stoked with this I'm really happy with how this turned out I'm glad that you guys enjoyed this I hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah I'm probably gonna do something very similar to this next week I just want to get this out of my way so just before I take pictures I'm gonna clean up my mess here and yeah I'm gonna take a whole bunch of pictures now and post uh, post some cool looks soon I'll try to like keep you guys updated when I'm doing my horror night with my mom this weekend to show you all the cool stuff there. But uh, yeah, I'm going to mostly be enjoying myself, so call 911 and prep. I should just go like wait somewhere. <laughs> oh my god. I just put myself outside my front door like lying there like, like this and just like take a pot puddle of blood and see how many people actually will stop <laughs> to help me. Or just lie out in the middle of the street and hope nobody runs me over. That'd be really funny. Okay, guys. I'm going to wish you good day. And I'll see you guys next week. For an all new Transformation Tuesday. So thank you guys. If you like this video, please smash that like button for me. Please share it with your friends and stuff. And if you have any questions about how to, how to do some of this, let me know. You can message me. Drop me a line. I miss you too, Justin. Miss all of you. Have an awesome day. And if any of you are going to be in Orlando, Florida, come hang with me at Universal Studios. Find me and say hi. All right? <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Till next time. Be good. Bye. Bye, YouTube, guys. <laughs>